that is the target for today's ride. That is uh, the Sierra del Cache, 1,300 and something meters high. So we are just crossing into Murcia, and the two road signs uh, denoting it, and then appearing in the background is the target of today's ride. We sort of come around the other side of the mountain now, so that's the the peak that we're going up. Uh, might be a little clearer. Um, so we've driven along the length of it and we're now approaching from where we're going to drop the car and uh, head on up. On the way up Sierra del Cache. So we've got quite a climb uh, to go. I have done this ride once before, didn't video it, and I came from the other side of the mountain. So although I've been to the top before, this is going to be a different route for me. So we're just on all the switchbacks now, so I don't know if you can see, but we're just going down and around and down and down. You'll be able to spot this on the map and then up we keep going. We're two kilometres in, I don't know if you can see if there's a reflection or not, but we're, this is the profile of the ride. Huge climb, huge descent and then ride out. And we're a tiny little blue dot at the start of the ride there, two kilometres in. So I'm thinking we've probably got about 10 or 12 kilometres till we get to the top. And the cruelest bit is right there, the last climb, right to the very top. We've already got some beautiful vistas. So you can see the height that we've climbed already, where the car's parked down in the bottom down here. And we've got some, uh, some great views already, but they will only get better. So it's just really constant switchbacks as I'm gaining altitude with a bit of a false flat in between. I think when you run hard uphill uh, slogs like this, it's about finding a gear and a cadence that you're sort of happy with. So I'm averaging sort of 12, 13 kilometers an hour at the moment. So, 130 beats per minute, nine hundred and seventy meters, and I think this is the albergue. Should like the hostel. Albergue de la Peña. And the next choice of direction. We've still got that rock face to climb. <laughs> Alto de Cache to the right. Well, I guess that's where we're going. It's looking quite threatening, and there's that cool breeze that normally comes in before rain. That's a great view. I think we're not far from sort of crossing over from the north side of the mountain to the other side because I can see we're just on a different slope of the, the mountain now. I don't know how clearly you can see but in the sort of the sun way over in the distance that's shining on the city or the town, large town, small city of uh, Yekla. You can see the road surface now is uh, quite a bit rougher.
That's what I want, Alto de Del Cache. There is the summit, I think. The antenna. But at the moment, we're on this horrible, soft gravel. Not nice. Saps all your energy. Makes it difficult to stop because it's a it's a big drop down the side. Here we go. So I think this is the start of the final climb. So La Rosa, which is the where the salt flats are, here where we started, and uh, El Cache. And there is the summit. There's a refuge up at the very top. I'm going to be going along and then back up. This is a good workout. So, if I can keep it still enough, the sort of rock face in the sun there is near Monova, near Monova, sort of La Romagnetta in between Monova and uh, uh, La Romana. In fact, I can just see the med through the gap. I don't know if I can zoom in when I'm editing. And then you can see all the mountains going out towards the Hundon Valley. The Hundon Valley is over, over there, the mountains in the distance. Uh, this is the La Romana Valley here, the Hundon Valley over here. Ah, it just keeps going. At least I know I'm getting closer. I've just asked Siri and I am 1,263 metres in altitude and it's 1,300 and something so and I think the final intersection now the last time I came here I went back down that way Summit. That sky doesn't look too promising. see rain. And there is the summit. So there's the refugio and the antenna and the road is just getting worse and steeper. Look at that for a view. Don't want to get too close to the edge though. <laughs> A couple of hundred meters to go. And here I am. Elegante in the sun and the Mediterranean. There you got the Hondon Valley. And you got 
Sleeping Lady Mountain in the middle of the screen. And you've got uh, Penoso. Sierra Pilar. And the summit. As there is nobody up here, I'll uh, leave the bike. Yeah, I'm not going to carry us up here. There we are, the summit. I think I'm the only person on the mountain today. So, so I'm now starting to get wet and I think the roads are gonna get wet if it continues to rain. I'm gonna head down, so we've got the summit behind me, stunning views. 1,300 and something meters. Let's start uh, descending. I don't know if I'm going to go back on the same route that I came up. I have got an option at an intersection to go another way. So we'll see what the weather's doing. But I'm going to go back down on some of the, uh, some of the track that I've just come back up on. Um, and I don't know if you can see, sort of down here, that's some of the track that I will be uh, going back on. So we'll see. Right, I've had a couple of... Uh, Protein bars. I'm fairly damp now. As it rained while I've been up here. That's my view. It's sunny over there. And I'm going back down the way I came up. But then going to take a different turning. And I'll see what the weather's like. And see how we get on. That's not going to be annoying, is it? And it's quite cool now. So I've taken the, uh, the other phone off the uh, handlebars. With the handlebars being wet, there's absolutely zero grip. So I didn't want to uh, lose that, so I've got both phones in the little bag. It's a little bit quicker than the, uh, the absolute slog coming up here. And the weather's cleared up as well a bit. So I'm at 1,160 metres now from 1,300 and something. Spent descending at a good lick. Just got to watch these rocks.
looks like I've got another decision to make. fast enough for me Just stop for a second to have a quick swig of water. Absolute silence. Just silence. And an old man wheezing, puffing and panting. Right, let's get on with it. gates for the National Park. So 27 kilometres and I'm out of the Natural Park. The first piece of tarmac, so I think it's a short piece of, uh, of tarmac that we must do. Respite. And I now need to make a decision. That way, back to the car. That way, back out into the countryside. <sighs> 31 kilometers, so I've done half of the ride. Time is five o'clock. Got 30 kilometers to do hour and a half, maybe a daylight. Uh, I've got to cross those hills by the looks of it. Uh, so I'll do it. let's do it. It can't be crossing the hills over here. It just can't be. I 
my car is way way over there but this is this route here it's showing I go ahead and then back maybe it's this just little ridge here anyway you know what I said about being in a nice warm gymnasium on an exercise bike or a rowing machine still wouldn't swap it I think I've got to the point in the ride now where I'm as far away as I could possibly can be so I'm I'm here on the map uh, Hello, hello, you can see hello. You're not a very good guard dog, are you? And the car is way down here. So, looking at the profile of the ride, it seems fairly okay. I've just got a little blip here, and I'm hoping it's not that. So, we shall see. But light drizzle. And we know what Peter Case says about that. And I've been cycling into the wind for about half an hour. So I'm on 38 kilometres now and at some point up here I head back. That's whether I cross over the lowest part of the hill there, which I couldn't believe we would go that far, but we will see. Rainbow? Rainbow, but I didn't find any gold. I've reached the furthest point and I'm on the way back, but I'm a hell of a long way from home. So I'm hoping I'm just on a track like this now for the rest of the way back. I'm not bothered about any technical fun bits. I just want to keep uh, 25 kilometers an hour, get back to the car. Like I said, I want to stay on the track and I come off and I'm back into the mountains. So I'm guessing this is the speed going to slow down somewhat. A bit of an update. We are... It is 22.6. Uh, and we are 43 kilometers in we're heading back in the uh, in the right direction it's a good quality road so uh, I haven't got a problem maintaining any uh, speed so I'm about 25k it's stunning scenery though I mean wow look at this Still got the rainbow behind me. Even way out here in the middle of absolute nowhere, there's, there's houses. We've got more property here. I think everything here is completely off grid. They've got everything seems to have solar. That was just like a little wooden chalet. Let's look at that. I think it's, they call it the golden hour, don't they? The hour before the sun goes down. Light is more diffused, colours more vibrant. Probably the best part of the day. Dusk and dawn. So I don't know if you can see, but if we look on the ride profile here, you can see the initial real steep climb and then the horrible climb to the summit and then the long downhill this is the total ride distance and we're here so we've done i'd say 75 percent 25 percent to go but we're we're making good time so 25 percent 30 maybe i don't know 12 15 kilometers maybe a little bit less right it takes us uh back over that ridge line back in 
barely see a thing because I'm cycling in the sun. There's been nothing too technical on today's ride. There's been lots of uh, slogging up hills, a bit of uh, fast descent, and then a lot of distance work. I think with hindsight I probably would have missed out this section, but it is beautiful scenery. And not in the wind, not in the rain. Finally get a sight of the mountain that I climbed in the first place. So that's Sierra del Carche directly in front of us, disappearing in the uh, in the clouds. Can't get a better view here. So that's one heck of a loop. All the way up that, round the other side, out into the countryside. Big loop up to, uh, I'm guessing, Humia. Didn't really see any road signs. Good work. Concentrate, it's always most dangerous when you're nearly home. In time. So I'm back on uh, on tarmac now. Um, I think the car is somewhere in the the foothills, just as the uh, just as the green forest starts. The entrance of the park is uh, is where I park the car. So uh, I'm not that far now. I've done 54 kilometres. Uh, Legs and backside are aching a bit, <laughs> but, but really, really good ride. Enjoyed it. Another part of the beautiful uh, part of the world that I'm lucky enough to call home. Well, the route, rather than taking me along the, the road that I was on, has now sent me through all the vineyards. So, I'm happy with that. Lettuce. I think this is broccoli. Yeah, it's been cropped already, and then maybe they're going for a second crop. Yeah. Let's have a suit. There you go. Hopefully, you can see. just make out some of the tracks I've been up. That seemed a long time ago. Well, it was a long time ago. It's what, 6.30 now? Five hours? A cabbage. I'm guessing that's from this side. The good thing with this app is when you uh, make a mistake after about 20 metres or so, it gives you a, a warning. There you go, it's just bleep to say I'm back on track. So, that's the end of Carche. 
my backside's killing me and this washboard surface doesn't help I have just got the first glimpse of the car way up on the side there just below the tree line so I don't know a kilometre, kilometre and a half never have I been happier to see my car oh. I think the energy drained out of me on that last climb <laughs> da -da. What a ride, 63 kilometers. Oh. So there we go. Driving away from uh, Sierra del Cach as it disappears into the clouds. Can't see the summit anymore. It's a successful day. Got the bike on the back. Let's see. I spend most of my time making sure it's still there. And we finished in daylight. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, all the dates will be on the uh, description. So uh, I'll see you for the next one. Until then. Adios. One final thing. In order to get to Sierra del Carche, we have to drive through the middle of Unsal, the salt factory. There's the way bridge for the trucks. And right through the middle of the factory. out the other side.